Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. We are here, back and ready to go now. Welcome to another episode of Walking with the Master. And I got a familiar face here, you know, one of the family. You know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that want to be in the family, but there are those who you know are in the family. And I have one. I'm Grandmaster Abdul Aziz Muhammad, formerly known and, and also still known in many circles as Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad. So I wanted to greet you. Assalamu alaikum and us. Us, Grandmaster, how are you doing? Us, my brother, us, family. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. It's a rainy day in New York, uh, inclement weather condition, but I'm happy to be here with my brother who warms up every time I see him anything that is happening in and around me. Come on, man. Come on. That's the that's our great brother, Grandmaster Phil McLeod. Oh, oh, oh. Man, well, listen, listen, you know, you, you, you are um, the type of brother who uh, when you come to the house, you know, you don't, you know, you don't have to ask for anybody uh, to get you a glass of water. You know where, you know where it is, you know how to go to get it, you know, because you're just family like that. Somebody else that come into the, into the house, hey, you better sit yourself right there and just ask what you need <laughs> because you don't want you looking around everywhere. <laughs> so you, you're a family member in this house, you know, so this is, this is your podcast along with all of ours. All right. Nice. So, nice. Yes, sir. So listen, this is what we want to do. Um, uh, we want to do today. We, we've talked about some things, but maybe someone on that don't really know all about you and is, is, is getting an opportunity to be exposed to you. So I want you to kind of share a little bit about where you come from, you know, uh, and, and what you're doing a little bit of, and then we're going to get on into the meat of it. Well, um, it, you know, my, my, my beginnings were, were um, I, I like to think them as being kind of historical at the time that I first seen and was introduced to, uh, to martial arts. And, and, I didn't know at the time that it was actually martial arts. It was a different kind of, of fighting that I seen in an environment that was kind of um, uh, controlled, <laughs> I would like to say, right? Uh, and it, it, as a matter of fact, that I was, I was incarcerated when I first seen uh, martial arts. And in doing this in incarceration, they had a group of individuals who came out of, of the mosque in Harlem that was, that was ministered by Malcolm at the time. And um, these, this group, they was, they was known uh, famously as the Harlem Six. Yes, sir. And um, in, in this incarceration, um, one of the brothers happened to uh, be making salat at the time. And um, while he was making salat, the, the, the CO, he, he came up and told him to get up and lock in. And, the, you know, the brothers were saying, when he finishes making salat, he will he will comply with your wishes, but not until he finished making the salat. And the CO was forceful about uh, him stopping and complying with what he was um, telling him to do. Ooh. And when when the when he didn't comply, he he rang the riot squad bell. And all of these big, big COs came up with these big, big sticks to force these foster brothers. And we were all standing there watching this process go on. Now, now there was some very uh, uh, 
famous brothers in martial arts to happen to be there at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Grandmaster Lumumba Hernandez was there. Uh, uh, Aikido Carl Riley was there. Felipe Luciano was there. And we all stood and watched this historical event occur before our eyes that we didn't understand. We didn't know what kind of fighting it was at the time, but they beat the hell out of the riot squad, took their weapons away from them, away from them. and ran them out of the out of the day hall. Out of the day hall. They ran out and slammed the door. They didn't want any more part of what was happening to them. So we 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 start inquiring, you know, what what kind of what what is this you guys was doing? What is this you was doing? And whatever the, the martial arts that they was doing at the time came under the ministry of of out of the mosque where Malcolm was. Uh, the minister at that time. So that was my introduction to the martial law. Man, man, that's that's an awesome introduction. <laughs> so, so, so you 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 were down during that period, and that is like, you know, that's not going to a tournament and seeing what somebody make something look like. That was real life activity. Oh, it was real. It was real. It, it was real. And you know, um, as and you know, our experience and circumstances happen to be different in most cases. People hear about you being incarcerated, but most of us are still incarcerated That's in right. the time that we are in, and um, and we don't even understand how to how to to get. Uh, 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 paroled or or or, or not from this type of this type of incarceration that we were in. What? So so it's, it, it was different. And and um so the next time you know during that time they wouldn't allow you to practice that but these brothers were they kind of revolutionized the whole um the penal uh, system, because you know, before before uh, we seen that type of uh, recalcitrant to authority, we you know most, most of us were compliant. We, we we went along with it. So they came and showed that you didn't have to be compliant to this type of uh, uh, persecution that was being imposed on us inside of those environments. And then, then they started, they started like teaching some of the brothers in, inside, which gave, gave us the fever for wanting to learn whatever it is that you was teaching, we are, we are interested, you know? We didn't understand what it was at the time. Whatever year it is that you were teaching, we're interested. And it came along, not only was the physical thing, it came along with a lot of different cultural philosophy at that time and stuff as well, which was very educational for us. Yes, sir. After you, after you were given what um, uh, they would consider freedom, um, uh, did you go right into martial arts? Uh, how did that go? Uh, well, well, when when I, I used to, I used to in, in I used to box in, in Elmira um, reception center. When I went through there, I used to box, right? Because they wouldn't let you do martial. You couldn't do martial arts, right? right? They would let you do the, the other things that existed at that time. Now I hear they took all of this type of uh, things out of the the the, uh, the institutions. Uh, all of the things that a, a lot of people, because you got to remember that when Malcolm was incarcerated, right, he, he educated himself by studying uh, studying Islam, studying the the, uh, the dictionary that he memorized every word in the, in the thing, 
So that type of, this type of thing I hear don't exist inside of those institutions no more because now they're, they're breeding, they're breeding the type of criminality that we see that comes out of there in our community because they, they come out there not knowing or learning anything. You know, so there is, it's, a, it's a different time um, uh, uh, for um, brothers who are coming out of those type of situations. Well, you, it's, yeah. it's, really, it's really sad uh, yeah. that they come into an environment that is already hostile and they have no type, type of preparations to, to, um, to exist inside of what is constantly moving and, and not to our benefit. So when I came, when I came, when I came, uh, when I came home, I, st I started trying to find a, a, to study martial arts uh, and I started practicing karate with uh, Kenny Morgan. He, he trained with Cofield at the time. And, um, and it, it, a while had passed, so I hadn't seen uh, Grandmaster Lumumba. We used to call him Crazy Horse at that time. That, that, that was the name that he was known by. And and I happened to be um, uh, practicing uh, with Kenny at St. George Hotel. And I, I seen this guy in the corner watching watching us practice. And I was saying, this guy looked familiar. And it was Grandmaster Lumumba. Mm. And, um, and I was saying, yo, yo, Crazy Horse. That's what he's called, yo, Crazy Horse. He wasn't, he wasn't Lumumba then. He was, he was Crazy Horse, Crazy Horse. And at the time when I seen him, he was already, uh, he was a black belt in Sinukas. He was a black belt in Vijitsu. And he was also a um, instructor at Fujapai uh, Black Tiger System in, in Chinatown. So he had, he had a, he had a whole few different hats and stuff that he was wearing. And um, so he told me about jujitsu. So now, <laughs> jujitsu, for those who can remember, they used to have this cartoon character on television at the time. The jujitsu guy, oh, so sorry. He was throwing, oh, so sorry. So when he told me he was doing jujitsu, I thought it was some funny stuff, right? <laughs> so I said, well, what, what is jujitsu? He told me to choke him. And when I choked him, he put a nicky on me and the pain was so severe. You know, I was like, what, what kind of hell kind of fighting is this, man? You know, I said, whatever it is, I want to be down, right? <laughs> so he, um, he kind of, um, took me and introduced me to everybody that I came to love and learn in this family of ours. Yes, yes, yes. Man, well, well, you know, of course, this show is in honor of Doc and keeping his honor up. And, and um, with that in mind, you were introduced to him uh, apparently at that at that, that's when you you were taking to taking to a class to see him. Well, well, what? Well, it, it was kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of strange because most of, because of the situation that I came home in. You know, you wasn't supposed to associate with certain people. You know, <laughs> according to, according to their narrative and stuff, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so on on the on the uh, on the perimeter, it was still going on, right? So there was there was uh, that was uh, Grandmaster Lumumba, right? There was uh, Arthur Hudson, uh, Big Tony, uh, Brian, uh, Jeffrey Ibrahim, and. All of these guys, I I knew, but you couldn't be where they was at because of the type of situation and stuff that I had. So most of these guys, we 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 trained in my house. <laughs> so, so 
So what they would do, what they would get in there, I was getting the same thing they was getting, but you know, I, I was privileged to be able to get it from the position that I was getting it from. So um, um, what, was, what, was, what was eventually unique about it, so um, Soke, Soke lived in the building with, with where I lived at, right? John well, you lived there too. Where well, you lived there too. Right? <laughs> so Soki was there, and I used to see him all the time. And, you know, and I was like, and I knew him because the movement had introduced me to him. Right? He was saying, I, matter of fact, the first time I seen Soki was on the cover of this martial art magazine that I had, and Lumumba told me, "Yo, this is this this is my friend. This is my brother." I said, "You know this guy." He said, yeah, that's, that's my brother. Look at him. He's doing it naturally. He was he had a he had a martial art pose that was that was, you know, it was different than what you see in tradition. So I said, well, you know, when, when I'm gonna meet this guy. And he took me and he introduced me to uh to Soki. And Soki lived in, you know, he lived in the building, but he had an apartment in the next building where he kept all his trophies and things. <laughs> all his plaques and trophies and stuff that he had. You know, I'm sorry. That's so okay, little John Davis that we're talking about. John Davis, absolutely right. And then, then uh, he, uh, Grandmaster Lumumba, he introduced me to uh, uh, Professor V, right? And um, so, and that was that was a unique experience because. I was talking to Kenny Brown yesterday, and, and we remember it like they used to have, they wasn't calling him Professor V at the time, they was calling him Mr. V. And they would bring him and have him work out and do classes in the backyard. And like, there was there was no uniforms and things at this time. There was just the, the stuff that you had on to work out in. And there was no mat, so, so it was, it was it was it was a it was a tough going. It was a really tough going and stuff, you know. But it was unique in the sense that you was experiencing these these phenomenal people who was who was training and and doing martial arts, but they was doing martial arts um, at a, at a frequency that's different than the times that we're in now. The times that we're in now, um, I, I was I was saying this to Lumumba recently about they 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 put a cut on these people. <laughs> that where we at now, the purity of who these guys was. So you had these guys; these were formidable guys. You know, had you had uh, uh, Carl Davis, who's a phenomenal martial artist. They was all students of uh, Doc Envy. And uh, you had Arthur Hudson, you had Big Tony, you had uh, um, uh, Jeffrey Ibrahim, um, you had Lefty, a, a few other real formidable uh, martial artists who was not just martial artists inside of the dojo, they were martial artists outside in real time. Yes, sir. Which, which was extremely different. Is extremely different because some of them, some of them, I would dare to say, they were, um, they were, um, they were, they were training like um, that. There was, there was an immediate war to attend to right now. Very interesting. Yes, and and it, it was phenomenal to to watch them because. The training didn't. It, the training didn't exist for an hour or whatever. It, it existed like the training, like went on all night until your 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 parents or your wife or whoever it is say y'all got to take that stuff out of the house. <laughs> you know, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. You know, so it was mm -hmm. that type of dedication and commitment to doing what it is that you was doing, as opposed to it is now where. You go to a class for an hour 
and you might not get a chance to do it because of the condition that the world the world that we're in that holds your attention uh keep your your mind your spirit everything goes where your attention is at and now our attention is basically on subsisting and sustaining our, our families through the jobs and things that we have yes well you know doc was was in New York City, of course, at that time, correct? Oh yes, yes, yes. And that's a that's a different um that was a different time, right? When 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 uh when Moses was here. This is Moses New York City was his home base. This is where he he was he where he where he came from, where he grew, where he put this this thing together, uh, self defense complete, where he put it together, um, and he 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 put this this art together based on the top type of individuals that I was telling that was around him at that time. Yes. So you you got you got you got to you got to remember we're talking about. Um, a phenomenal young man at the age of 28, 29, 30 years old, when he was sent, when he was called Sensei Moses. And I used to hear that regularly, Sensei Moses. Then it was Master Moses, right? And who he was at that time was based around who it was that was around him that made him who he was at that time. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so going back to Hudson again, right? So Hudson was, Hudson was a, a, a very unique individual, right? And some people thought he was a miniature Moses, right? <laughs> because he was extremely formidable. So he was so formidable that, he, you know, he, 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 he felt that, you know, that he, he could best his teacher. And so he, he made the attempt, you know, just, just to, you know, to check the waters out to see if it was possible to do it because it didn't, you know, as the story goes, he was even telling them, said, listen, you know, we're going to do this here. We're going to have this here, you know, expression of, of this thing here. And I don't want you to feel no way after it's over, you know, you know, if I have your students and they be mine and all that type of stuff, Hudson was talking, right? And so I got I got to get Khadib and Kitty on them because all of them know this story, right? So they they went down to, to 554 Atlantic Avenue and they was like they was in there just the two of them locked the door, the door. So Hudson said he he knew things may wasn't going to go the way that he had expected it to go when he got in there and, and Moses locked the door. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, but being true to who he was, he said when, when Moses was sitting in Cesar waiting for him to come out of the, the room, the dressing room and stuff, he said he was gonna, he was gonna try to get off, get off first. He said things went bad from there. <laughs> So he said he said Moses knocked him out eleven times. He said he knocked him out eleven times. Eleven times. He said some of them he he some of the knockouts he said he faked because he was trying to get a break. <laughs> he, was to, he was trying to get a pause in the cause of the of the beating that he was taking and stuff. And he said it went on until for Professor Key, Professor V came in that next that in the morning, because it went on all night long. He, he came in in the morning and and he said, Professor Lee came in and said, oh, he said, oh, I'm sorry. I missed this, <laughs> you know? So, and then, you know, a lot of the other guys, because of who Moses was at the time that Moses was Moses, they was like, oh, you know, maybe we could, you know, if we, uh, if we got together, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we could, and then Hudson was telling them, said, no, 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 that's not going to happen, man. It can't be done. I tried. <laughs> he said, oh. he said I, already, I already tested the ground on that. Forget it. That ain't going to happen, you know? So, oh, man. 
So it, so when Moses was here, it was a different climate, I feel, that was in the, exp the experience and the expression of martial arts because all those guys had to be all the time on their A game. You know, it, it wasn't no, you could take no break or you was a, a, a martial hobbyist. You, you was all the time training at your A game because you couldn't even be in the environment where they was at because it was too formidable. And, um, you know, the environment changed after Moses left, I feel. You know, mm -hmm. when he when he left, all of all of the everything got a, a a little lax. People went different places and stuff, and it wasn't that type of intensity. Because you got to remember when he was here, who he was. You could, I think it was Lumumba who said, "Man, the secret to Sanukas was that you had to be in shape to take those ass weapons." <laughs> Because he he gave a twenty four carat it was it was twenty four carat golden aspirins all the time, you, so you couldn't be around that environment or in that condition around these guys, not being in condition to be able to hang. You couldn't walk into that environment. It was the environment was it was too formidable. It was an extremely formidable environment. So so when when Moses left, you know, Moses went where Moses was at. So wherever Moses went, he just created another environment with the same type of people. When he went to, went to Florida, he had formidable people down there that was around him. But I don't think that, that any place that he went was not like his original base. It's like the first res, yes. you know? The, the ones that he created first here was the most formidable, and for my estimation, the most formidable of all the other places that he went. Because in this environment here was a, is New York. And New York has always been New York. And the people in New York were always the pe the people that was around him here helped to make Moses Moses just like um, Moses made V made Moses but Moses made V mm. you know um, Moses was he was unique in the expression of urban survival he was extremely unique. In, in, the, in the expression of urban survival. He brought a brand new expression of defense, or so now I won't even say defense for survival for uh, black people in urban survival, in urban environments, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what made um, his, his art, uh, different. A lot of people wanted to watch him do the things that he he did, but they I don't think they had the, the mindset to to make it do what it did. You know, they, they didn't have that that mindset. I don't feel that they had the mindset. There's only a few <laughs> that carried the mindset of Moses. And when you've seen them, you've seen them like you know, Brother Lewis and those guys, that's, that's, a, that's a mindset for those who know. That was a mindset, you know? Everybody didn't have that mindset, I think. Well, you, you, you mentioned some things that are very important uh, as it relates to, um, as it relates to uh, Doc uh, back in that time and what he produced uh, under his tutelage, you know? He did go to various locations. And I mean, no matter where he went, he taught. Um, but as you say, you know, in that New York based location where he was able to flow uh, consistently, uh, he, he produced some real giants. I mean, one of the 
great giants that he produced is Soke Little John. Absolutely. No, and he was going around the country, man, repping, repping uh, um, Sanukis and yeah. tearing, tearing stuff up. I, I remember him being in the magazine myself, you know, uh, and, I, and I was a young guy. Yeah, I think, you know, what, what you were saying, um, in reference to to Soke um, and these guys that was around that I was, I'm talking about the Hudson's and all these guys who was, who were, you know, to, to give an expression of it, you know, no disrespect. They were, they were, they were bandits, but Soke was at the, at the, at the helm. You know, he, he did something a little different than they did. But you know, he he was king in both arenas. Yes. You know, because he, he did what he did so well, right? And all of them, all of them always gave ultimate respect to Soki. You know, ultimate respect. So you know, and Soki was a guy when you seen him during that time. You didn't know what kind of uniform. You was like, wait, where did he get a uniform like that? Because it looked like there was threads hanging off of him. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the, the geese that he had, it wasn't like, so you know what I'm saying? His All of his interests, he wasn't interested in pretty uniforms and geese and nothing like that. None of that type of stuff. He was, if, if in terms of martial uh, fashion, he was a misfit, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> But whoa! So half of his every 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 time you see Soke, it looked like he needed a new uniform, right? <laughs> right. And and the same went for and the same went for the Obies. Like you would see him sometimes he had different Obies on. And so wait a minute, you know what 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 rank is this guy? Because that wasn't the intent. The intent was the practice and study of the craft that he he was he was excellent at you know yes. Yes. and uh and, and the same thing like um um those guys the, the moment those guys when you was training in the backyard it was like it was it was it was like a dog the dog house you went in there man it was it was it was formidable you know and those guys had so so um so this is a story about me, Lumumba, and Doc. We we was we was uh, in my house one time, and we was talking, and I was I was telling on everybody because I was telling Doc about the fact that that Jeffrey and and them guys and Tony and them and Brian and them they was talking about Let, let's get together and. <laughs> You know, we go, we go, we go try to, we go try to ambush him and stuff, right? <laughs> the husband said, "No, man, you, you don't, you don't want to do that, man." He said, "That's, that's not a very good thought to have and stuff, right?" So I said, I said to him, I said, "Yeah, they was, they, this is what they were saying." He said, "I know they were saying that." He said, "I think when they would come into my prison, I would feel them." <laughs> you know, he said, "I know they were saying." He said, "Listen," he said, "I didn't train no pumps." He said, I trained one other. I didn't go to mention. He said, I trained one other, but no pumps. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, 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 so he was, he was saying, yeah, you know, like, he was saying like Lumumba and John and all of those guys. He said, there's killers. He said, but I'm the killer's killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, so that's a that's that's a, an individual that you would have to have experienced in the time in his time. You'd have to see it in his time. Even with Soke, a lot of people in this time never seen Soke in his time. They know of him, yes. but they never seen him. you. You experienced both of them in their time. That's mm. different. Uh, Grandmaster, that's different. 
You know, you, you can only now, people can only get that story vicariously by listening to what you have already experienced. And, and it sounds science fiction. It's not, like it's, it's not like a science fiction. You would have to be there. A lot of, a lot of the ones in this time wouldn't even want to be around those at that time. You know, just just think you you know and remember the Lewises. And it was a it was a few of them that was in that same category that came out of his tutelage. And yeah. you know, you, you try to, to describe to people how formidable that is. They, and, and it don't go off because they can't comprehend that because we're in the time of technology and YouTube and, you know, tr you know, they said tricks is for kids, silly rabbit. And it's a bunch of tricks and stuff, you know? At that time, it's like trying to explain to people in this time about the first res. They was, they was of the same type of mindset that's needed in this time. Yes. You know, and you know, it's, how, how do you, how do you resurrect that? You understand, it's like, we're talking a language now that some people may not understand, but you understand the language now I'm speaking. You can see, you can see the picture, you know? Right. You know, so speaking about Moses again, so Moses left and you brought him back to, um, in the early, early, late 80s, early 90s, you, you did an event and you had everybody there. You had uh, Pereira, V, and I think at that time, V and Pereira hadn't spoken in years. That's right. And you brought that event together and you had uh, Moses came in. I remember Moses came in, he brought, uh, uh, Carol Little with him from, he was in Atlanta at the time, yes. right? He brought him up and he came in and, you know, he did, he did what he did. Moses was, he was, he was in his performance, he was miraculous in the expression of, of, of hurt. <laughs> it, it, it's different. You know, because his thing was like, no, don't, don't hurt before you hit. <laughs> and, and that's what he did. But a lot of people who seen that, they wanted to, they didn't want to experience it. They wanted to watch it from the sidelines. They wanted, they didn't want to be a part of that hurt, like the 24 karat aspirin I was telling you about that everybody was saying. They had, they wanted to experience it from the outside, they didn't want to be in. So, so, so finally, I think you were at Paul Robeson at the time and Moses started, he started, he started coming back. And uh, this is before World Collide. And so finally, when he did come back, you know, when he was, when he wasn't here, Every, every other person that you, you, you met said that they trained with Moses or they trained under Moses or they trained in the environment where, where Moses' craft had been taught, right? And you would say, well, did you, did you know these other formidable people? Because the ones that we're talking about, they were like, they were like serious um, how, how do you say how what address around you? They were bandits. They was, <laughs> it was like you you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to run across them late at night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, wow. so 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 uh so when Moses when Moses came back, you know the same ones because I, I was studying Aikido the, the whole time that he wasn't there. I was studying Aikido on the, with Lukman at Brooklyn Aikido Club, right? And they, a lot of the guys who came to the, oh, yeah, Moses Power, studied Moses Power. When Moses came back, you know, and, and you had him at World Collide, he was there and we was like, yo, um, you know, Doc is back in Moses, back in town, you know? 
and everybody wanted to everybody like you could you couldn't find none of these guys. None of these guys didn't want to. None of these guys would none of these guys would show up. You used to have the, even that 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 at the black belt class that you'd have on Sunday, you know, that he that he he taught and stuff, you know. They want to come and be spectators, but they didn't want to participate in that those those those, those hurt beatings that was happening, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and, and you know, when when we brought um Doc in and and the truth is um you know I, I the uh, security company uh, was just getting off the ground and we were doing some things. So um, I, I was able to talk to, uh, to Doc and uh, he, he would, opened himself up to come on back to New York and I paid yeah. as, as, for him to come on in. I, I, I put him up in, a, in an apartment um, uh, and, and, you know, Doc is a grown man now, you know, so it's, it's but so long you're going to be able to take care of him because he go, he got to go in and do his own thing, but we right. got him to New York and, and, uh, from that, from that getting him to New York, this is right around that time. Cause that was, uh, 1989, the last of 89 going into 90, 1990 was the event itself. September, I think it was, if I if I remember correctly, and man, it was awesome. But the like you mentioned with Grand Professor V and and uh, Shannon Antonio Pereira, that they hadn't been together in thirty years. Wow, thirty years, and um, Allah, God blessed. Uh, to be able to get him to come on over, and that's when he said the the uh, the feud is over. You know, after thirty years, man, I was I was man just totally blown away that 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 I could have been and really we could have been a part uh, a, a party to making that happen. That was absolutely uh, incredible. And he, Shinan uh, Antonio Pereira, man, he is a very, very organized person. Uh, and he brought in easily 75 of his, his black men. And, he, and they had family. The whole, we, and, and we had so many. We had uh, uh, Grandmaster Ron Van Cleef. We, and, and matter of fact, you're going to get a chance to see some of this material um uh in just a minute you know so so hold on for that so but but nonetheless man it was really really an awesome now the thing about it though is that like you said many didn't want to come on in and get touched every day you know what i'm saying you know they would pop in uh and and visit and 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 get some pointers <laughs> I'll say it like that, as opposed to getting touched and yes. being whenever. You know, you know, Bill, you know when we when we were in when worlds collide, you you know who, who came through there and 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 stopped by, but yes. joined under him that say lived in New York, but they they didn't come and get under him like. Like, uh, <laughs> like, like we know, yes, uh, and, and have been a student, but, but nonetheless, man, he was so profound that him touching you one time, him, you know, whispering techniques to you was enough to make you look like a giant among yes. others, you know. Yeah. So he was just that powerful. Yes, sir. Yeah, and and the love of him was that, you know, he, he would always, you know, when he would do something, he'd, he would say like, y'all Yo, think you understand what, I, what I'm doing here. Right. You know, anybody asking no questions, right? We had the ability to be, be in, in, in the classroom 
with him to ask questions yes. and to, to observe what he did and the mindset of who it was that was doing it all day long. All day long. It wasn't like for a couple of hours, whatever it is. He was there in the morning. And usually sometimes he was he we would leave and he would still be there. That's right. So we we got to see him in a lot of circumstances that people can't even comprehend. They can't even conceive that you are studying the, this, this emanation, this source from which this thing came from. And see, so then you start to see, like, and I used to tell him, I said, say to Doc, I said, yo, I said, Doc, that's, I said, that's, that's, that's some trifling stuff you're doing. He said, thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> because you, you can't, you, me saying that, because I seen, the mindset that was orchestrating this hurt. Yes. And that, that was different, you know. That was that was that was different. <laughs> so, so, you know, so one time I got there a little early and nobody had gotten there yet, right? And so 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 Doc said, said to me, he says, uh, hey, we, we're not gonna start this here yet. We're gonna wait for somebody else to come because this one-on-one -on -one thing might be a little rough for you. I said, I said, oh, it's... <laughs> so, I'm, I'm down with the weight, <laughs> you, know what I'm you know, so, and so who, who he was, the psychology, the, his mindset was what you seen the instruments that through which he expressed who lived inside of him, you seen the instruments, right? And you, you didn't get a chance to see them in this entirety until you could see the man on all day basis. Yes. Where you, you happen to see the mindset of this individual that was that was architecting, that, that was setting this thing in motion. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. So it, it was it was a, it was like when you see it, you had to, you had to, you had to, you had to us the mind of the architect of this this thing. This is a lot of times you always heard him say that he was Sanukis. He said, I'm right. Sanukis. You know, I'm Sanukis. So at his memorial, we was talking about this earlier, at his memorial, the greatest accolade to this guy was given by the minister at his memorial, right? The minister said, He said, this is the most dangerous man that I have ever known. Mm. To say that, it's like, you, first you, you, consider, you consider the source from which it comes. <laughs> right. and, the back, and the background of this thing, to say that. So uh, how, how could you, how could you, you know, and then you and I happen to, to live with it, where we can bear witness to what our brother was saying. So a lot of things that we are saying here that we are not saying here, right? <laughs> about, about who our brother was and who, who he was, man. The, this was a phenomenal individual who came through here and dropped this, 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 this information. But a lot of people, um, they, they're still trying to do the effect of what he did and not understanding the cause. Come on, come on now. Yes. So, you know, the, co the, cause, was, the cause was greater than the effect. You know what I'm saying? The cause was greater than the effect. You know, and then when you see it, 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 it was, and when you got a chance to really understand it, it was really scary. Man. You know, you're like, oh my goodness, this this guy was, he was, he was a samurai, he was a general, he was, he was a warrior, he was a warrior deluxe. Mm -hmm. He was a friend. Yes, and and a beautiful, beautiful human being. So, so one day, here go, here go the thing here, right? The thing is, though, so he he uh when he when he came down, he I think he went to 
Tom Curry's, Tom Curry's teacher said, listen, he said, Bill, I'm going over here to do this thing at Tom Curry's teacher school and stuff. I want you to come and go with me. I'm, I'm going to give you some money. I was like, what? <laughs> we'll do what? So I'm like, oh, this is No, I ain't, I ain't expecting him, you know? So, so we went over and we did what we did. And he said, he pulled, called me over and said, all right. He said, all right, we did it. We done. Let's, let's go. And then, then he, he put $300 in my hand. Mm. I know if we got that, you know, I'm like, I, I didn't even, yo, it didn't be here. I couldn't even give it back to him. You know, so the love of this individual, this is why I, I, I pray for him daily. I pray yeah. for his spirit, his soul daily. I mention his name daily. It's not a day that I don't go by, I don't mention his name. Yes, you know? that's right. And right. uh, this is how, this is what he, 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 he meant to me. And if it, and the thing about it is that we, we have to us his beginning because if we, do, we would have no relevancy had, if, it, if he never existed. Right. You know, all of the ones who even saying what they're saying, if they'd never been no him, whatever they think of him, if they'd never been no him, they would have never been no them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? So, so he's, he's, he's relevant, but, you know, getting back to being able to, to live with him. So I had an occasion where I had to express that somebody was saying nobody knew Moses. I'm saying, no, you ain't know him unless you lived with him. Mm. You know, in the, in, the, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you know, seven days, 30 days, 365 days. Then you, you got a chance to see all the polarities of who it was that he, he, he was in, in, in the times that you, you see this. So, you know, I tell Soki this regularly, right? I said, yo. Sophie, a lot of people never seen you in the time that you were in all of the things that you did with your thing where he could he could be he could be punching, kicking, sweeping, and throwing simultaneously. Ooh. And you would have to be this to actually see that to understand what it is he's doing to do it. And nobody is, you know, a, a lot of a lot of uh um uh, you know, technology didn't exist at that time with cameras and stuff like that, which you could film and you could get everything. They got some, but they ain't got it all. They ain't got the ones that when you was in there and it, it, you was, it, it, it was just you and there, no cameras. Oh. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was going on in there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes you'd be looking for an exit and there was no, there was no exit. Nobody put the exit sign over the door. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, uh, it, it, it's truly a blessing and an honor to have trained with him, to have grown up uh, under his training and instruction. Uh, I, I was blessed and you as well, you know, coming from the time that you came from and, and experienced being exposed to things that you were exposed to these are all all blessings and i'm i'm grateful and i'm i gotta say publicly too i'm so grateful to you for being my brother all through the early days <laughs> and and being there you know uh all the time that you have been there and uh supporting So, so um, um, one of one of the things, uh, G, I, I remember I was, I was. Uh, so you you were you was always trying to get back to Chicago, right? And um, so, and I remember you was telling me said, 
you know, I'm planning to use that Paul Robeson attire. I'm, I'm planning to do this here. And because I was doing something completely different, right? And you said, well, you need to come over here and, 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 uh, you know, help me over here at the thing, man. You know, cause you know, pretty soon I may, and I may need somebody just to, just to, to stand in and stuff like that. You know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm back and forth and stuff. You know, you hadn't officially gotten there yet, right? Cause you did the world collide and that type of thing, but you were still, you know, in the process of doing that as well and stuff. So, and I was like, okay, all right. And, and, and then, and I was like, you, you, you drug, you drug me. Same so, same with Soki. You drug me from darkness to light. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then like I said, all, all right, and and here we are. We've been ever, ever since. But you know, the thing about it is that how the creator, and, and you know, I watch you all my all my life, basically, because you you was you was in the same spot where I was at. You know, I used to watch you coming and going, even though you know you was you was traveling one way and I was traveling another way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and same same thing with Soki. Soki was like, and and like, it's it's like how the creator intended for certain things to be. Yes, yes. Isn't it so? Yeah, you know, so, you know, um, I, I, used to see, so I used to see him on the elevator. One time he was getting on the elevator, he was, because he was on the sixth floor, on the 14, right? And he was getting on the elevator. I was like, oh my God. He said, yo, man, yo, you need to come on back to the thing. I think he was, he was uptown at the time, you know? He said, come on, come on back to say, I'm coming. I said, I'm, it's okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so after you couldn't get you 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 couldn't get away from it. <laughs> you, know what I'm you couldn't get away from it, you know. So and and um, you know, I I uh, in the beginning I was talking about the the mindset of brothers doing that era in time. I don't know if it's a generational thing, as opposed to the mindset now and the commitment that we have towards perfecting this craft of ours and the attention and stuff that we we give it you know um i i kind of feel that you know sometimes the things that we do are be ego based in terms of people wanting to um display um you know what the what this thing is that they do keep shining the light on me instead of instead of we you know um you know uh it takes it takes it takes a village it takes everybody come on uh, one of one of us is not as great as all of us come on you know and it's it's very important what can be constructed when you know with that type of um, unity that's that's happening in the preservation of this craft that we have, to be able to pass it back, particularly to the to the uh, to the children, but you you can't just pass back um, the physicality. You have to give them concept, principles, and philosophy as well. All right that they have, you know, that they can feed on principles of character development, uh, integrity and moral development, particularly in this time that we're in. Because a, a lot of the ones in this time is not coded as we were, you know? Yeah. You know, so, you know, there was, there was no um, type of uh, language, uh, in front of your mother, regardless of what type of language we had amongst us. That's right, man. You know, that was that was completely unheard of. You know? And um and now there's no there's no code of ethics and morals that's being taught. So we hear about all the different things that we happen with 
kids with firearms in elementary schools here in New York. Firearms in elementary school, that was unheard of. You know, no more, no more uh, schoolyard uh, fight, man up type of thing. None of that, no more. And it's no, re the, the thing that they value that they have about life is, is, um, is none. They have no value about life because over, over something that's so trivial, they can go get a firearm and end this person's life. Not only do they end this person's life, they end this person's family life. They, it, it, everybody that's around the person that they did this to, they damage. They, they can't even see that far, nor, nor, nor can they see the karma that it causes to them uh, presently, futuristically, or in generationally, yes. you know? So it's like what, what we do now with what we have in passing it back is very, very extremely important because doing so, the legacy upon which we stand from Fee to Moses to, to Soki lives, lives on in them as well. And, you know? and, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me say this uh, in, in our closing. Uh, man, this is what I say, you know, we got to keep, we got to keep bringing you on so that, you know, we can continue to bless everybody with this history, with, with this information. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's just wonderful, but, but in closing, I want to, uh, uh, put out to everybody, you know, that, that, we have to know that these young people did not just choose to be the way that they are today. That it is being designed. It's being designed. It has been designed to create a situation that it is, create the situation that it is today. And we as trainers and teachers, uh, and as you said, it's not just teaching physicality, you know, it's not just teaching them. Uh, it is about teaching them morals and and uh, you know the things that you that you mentioned and and see we have to have a level of unity. Another part that's not being uh, that we don't realize is that we fight amongst our grown selves in the school situation, and we are not bringing and talking about unity, we're trying to identify ourselves as being the best. As opposed to saying, let's come together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let you all know something out there uh, that come here to look and whatnot, and you've, you've said many times that you appreciate what it is that we do. I want you to know that as you look around, listen for the ones who talk about unity. And this is for the ones who talk about self-aggrandizing. Whatever the self is being promoted, you're not in the best place. I'm not going to say you're not in the right place. I'll say you're not in the best place. Promote and help talk to your teachers. About, and ask, why can't we come in unity with each other? There's no reason why we can't. Uh, uh, we can't come into, um, into unity. It, it, the, the only problem is <laughs> is that we do not we do not want to come together with others that may, in their own mind, make them look less than. But that's a, that's a big thing that uh, the enemy has done. Don't worry about that. Let's come together. You can find out that you will make, be made bigger than you are. Stop talking this unity. Talk unity. Let's come together and build a infrastructure that will not be able to be touched and Doc's name will be listened to. I, I, I'm, you know, uh, forget, forgive me if, if 
if uh, I sound like I'm on a, <laughs> my soapbox, but I just want to every so often say that. And and of course, your inspiration, Grandmaster Bill, that's something. So, so if it, do you have an event that's going on uh, that's happening? Uh, yeah, we are we're in the process of we are in the process of of putting something together for 2023, and it would, that's is to be announced. But one of the things I would I would like to say here is that in in the, you know the the difference between civilization and modernization, right? Mm -hmm. We're living in a modernized time that's not civilized, mm -hmm. right? And modernization creates individuality and what you would call independence, right? But in, in this creative magic that we are in, this creative process with the sun and the moon, the earth and all of the rest of the thing, None of them are independent of each other. Yeah. All of them work in cooperation for its existence. There's no such thing as independence in the creator's creation, none. You can't find nothing that's independent. Air is not independent of the sun. The sun is not independent of the water. All of them are part of the creative process and they all work in harmony with each other for our existence. But no, we want to be separate. We want to be individual and individual. We want to be divided. It means that we're divided, right? And and that's the thing. We want to we want to act like act like the creative process. The creative process is is not is it's not competition. It's cooperation. Everything in the creative process corporates, corp it corporate, it, 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 it corporate with each other for its existence and for our existence. Yes. That's a, that's a simple thing. Somebody go prove me wrong, <laughs> right? So, so we, we got to start acting like the divine design, you know, a lost creation. Act like a lost creation. You don't want to act like anybody else, act like the creation process. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and 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 in the in the creative process is unit. Everything is in unity. Anything that separates itself is contrary to the divine design. Man, you know? yeah. it's that other yeah. cat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, we gotta we gotta keep it keep it moving and stay strong, and we gotta increase our intelligence you know, increase it. Um, so, so with that, with that Grandmaster Man, it's been a pleasure having you on. I mm -hmm. want to mention- It's my man. pleasure. Anytime I can get around you, G-Man, it's, it's pleasurable. You know what I'm saying? I told you, you're my jazz. You're my jazz, baby. You're my jazz. And, and you my rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, I want to mention another uh, event that's ha is happening uh, on the 1st of uh, January. We're having our our annual um, first of the year class and training and all of that good stuff here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I want you to know that. So you, you'll be able to uh, get that information as well. Uh, also, we have representing... Um, uh, the docs first anniversary uh the one that we have on an annual basis we're going to be with uh grandmaster tom curry uh who will have his event the weekend of the 14th of january so if you if you are uh, anywhere near um the new york area you in philly you in you in uh, uh jersey you you're in Delaware, you're in um, uh, uh, anywhere, ever you are, come on down to uh, Staten Island, where we're going to be down uh, right there with, with uh, Grandmaster Tom Curry uh, there, who, who has 
a hosted back and then open because we're still repping him uh, as we do what we do. So be there as well. Hey, listen, I want to thank you all for being present. Now, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and get the button to subscribe and hit the notification so that you can be notified whenever we're doing something. Another episode has yes, happened. Listen, don't leave just yet because we've got a little something coming for you in, in a moment and it's about health. So I want you to get that. We're going to give you a few minutes of some health and then we're going to close it one out. All right, family. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Us, Grandmaster. Us, us. <laughs> My brother. Welcome back. We're back at it again on the official Grandmaster Abdul Aziz, official Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad. What known now as Abdul Aziz Muhammad's podcast, Walking with the Master. And we're back here with Master Andrew, who's going to take us into our next segment, giving you little doses at a time, right? Just little doses at a time. So let's get it started, Master. Greetings and blessings again, Sister Aziza. It's a blessing and pleasure to be here. I'm truly blessed. Um, you know, last week we spoke about the protein and how we get from the ginger and what the ginger does. We're going to recap. So we had our lemon and water for the last two weeks. We have our ginger, uh, whether it's before, during, or after the last meal. And then we spoke about protein, how we're going to put the protein together. We spoke about Different, different fruits we can add to the protein. We spoke about getting the literature on the protein that we're using. Um, you're blessed because you create your own <laughs> stuff and you cook your own. So you're blessed. And uh, anybody who can do that, I have to commend you. That's really, really good. You know, that's, that's top of the top. Um, so we had our lemon and water. We have our ginger. Now we're getting into the first part of the day or the mid part of the day, all depends on what you are actually doing. Um, so you have your protein. I, the feedback I normally get on the protein and the protein shake is, oh, I didn't know I would feel that full mm -hmm. for so long. And they normally ask me, so do I, uh, uh, you know, do I, <laughs> do I eat something else? Uh, I said, no, just drink a cup of water because you need to give your body time to digest mm. your food. So now the digestive part of your food is when you're getting all that good stuff, that nutrients, that, that, that really potent, you know, you're getting your eye, you're getting everything from it. Mm. Now, after you, 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 you're doing all of that, you feel different. So you're not going to feel hungry. You'll feel like, and you're not supposed to have your body to feel hungry. Because then again, last week you spoke about your body start cannibalizing itself. Mm -hmm. So we don't need that. So we need our body to be satisfied, content. You cannot be over full because then you're going to get heavy. So that's where the filling, you get rid of the filling. So mm -hmm. instead of having that rice, you know, <laughs> that, that bread, you know. Mm. Uh, we gotta gotta get rid of those little stuff, you know. <laughs> so, because we all know that bread turns to sugar. Yes, sir. we all know that. We all know the rice is not don't give you so much nutrients unless you add something to it. Um, you know, sweet potato is so good for you. You know, um, you know, if you're gonna have corn, have the fresh corn because your body is going to deal with it so much. Your body doesn't really deal with corn too good. You know? So you have to just understand that you're going through the process now of a lifestyle change. Now, why I say that is because if you can go out and you can work for somebody and give them your best, 
why can't you give yourself the best to have the energy to live? So we have to literally know that, and look, if I don't take care of myself, I'm not going to last. I'm just not going to last. I'm not going to have a good quality of life. I need to get up, get my new nutrients and my nutrition right, and then you'll find out that all the work that you're doing with the martial arts, physical and mentally becomes so easier because your body feels right, you know? So we recap again, the lifestyle change is the lemon and water first thing every morning, the ginger before meal or yes, during sir. or after, right? Then yes, you get sir. our protein shake in. You can use the fruit of your choice. Mm -hmm. Please look at the label and get the right protein. Less sugar, less sodium. Yes, sir. Right? Now, I'll tell you the function of the eating that I believe in. In the morning, we eat like we're royal kings and queen, prince and princesses. So that's your protein that has all the nutrients you need. At lunch, you take it down a notch right? We all know that we should stay away from fried stuff, especially fried stuff. <laughs> we can't eat fried stuff at night and go to bed. It doesn't work, right? So if we really try to get the baking instead of frying, you know, it's the same chicken or the same whatever um, meal that you're preparing. But baking kind of just gets all the fat and the oil out and it leaves what you actually need, all right? So for lunch, all you do, you try to make a salad. You know, we all, we all like salads. You make a salad, don't forget your water. And, you know, in the, in the evening, I like to have a cup of tea. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. I like a cup of black tea, a cup of green tea, which really, really helps you tremendously. And it keeps me calm. It keeps me awake, but calm. So I like to enter the evening like I am going into fasting. So you have to go into fasting real life, right? Yeah. And then you, you, you sleep, you wake up in the morning, you come out of that fast with a cup of water, a cup of lemon and water, you come out real nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you find that your body, your intestines start getting smaller without have to go into the doctor to cut it out a piece. <laughs> and then it start getting smaller by itself. Because the more nutrition and the less filling you have is the more you're reducing the size of your stomach. Awesome. Right? So do you have any questions for me? Well, you know, I, I'm always, I listen to everything and I'm, I'm, I want to be able to um, give options or tweak certain things for certain people who are adhering to the um, How to Eat to Live program that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us where they're eating one meal a day so that they could get all the proper nutrients that they need without feeling so full um, in that one meal that would last them till they eat their next meal. So I'm listening to the powerful you know, ingredients and things that you have mentioned um, to, to just get a hold of how that will really fill them up and allow them to continue out through the day with whatever work they have to do. So with your information, with your expertise, you can probably um, answer any of those questions or fill any of that information in much better than I can, I'm sure. Well, you know, like you said, um, you're going to start using it for your one meal a day in the afternoon or midday or 
you know, just the ingredients that you put in food that sustain your body is your body has to use that nutrient. So when you get your one meal a day, you still have to do all the work you, you did, you normally would do. So your body get used to pulling that nutrients from the food. Yes, sir. So okay. you have to, you literally have to keep doing that exercise you're doing. Keep, don't cut nothing. Okay. Okay. Your body has to pull that nutrients. If you, if you cut a workout, then your body is not pulling that nutrients because it doesn't need to. Okay. Okay. I didn't think about that. When the, all the nutrients and all the filling is gone, your stomach feels very, very good because now you're not hungry. Even though your stomach <laughs> is not feeling full, now all the nutrients is work. So now you get body power. You feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a point where they go on automatic. You know, mm -hmm. you, you work and then you feel so good. You don't even know that your body is, you know, enjoying and pulling all that nutrients, but you don't feel hungry. You don't feel fatigued. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly what I have seen. Mm -hmm. um, if some people don't get the food on time, their body don't get the food on time, they get fatigued. Yes. Yes. With I've the experienced. protein, with the protein shake, it's hard for your body to get fatigued because the oatmeal is sustaining because it's it's grown it's it's kind of swelling, but that's why I said two 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 uh, maybe two Table table spoon. or three tablespoon of, of 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 oatmeal, so that will sustain you. And I've heard that from so many clients of mine. You know, they they have their oatmeal in the morning and they don't feel hungry until in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what I always go ahead, go ahead. What I always say is that. You make sure you hydrate, 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 hydrate. <laughs> you know, hydrate, you have your bottle of water. You know, our body is made up of mostly water. Yes, so we have to, we have to give it, give that water. We have to make sure everyone is, um, you know, getting the, the, the right amount of liquids in their body. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad that you um, you said that again, because we always need a reminder for that. Um, because a, a lot of times what I've realized too is that when I am feeling hungry, when I drink water, it takes the hunger away. So we don't always, um, we can't always decipher between hunger and thirst. You know, our body doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, decipher that for us but when you drink your body's getting the electrolytes and especially if you drink the best water you know and it takes that hunger away so I'm glad that is a, a reminder that we have to um, put forth as much as possible you know because sometimes we just want to pop something in our mouth and chew <laughs> I'm talking for myself <laughs> yes <Chew. laughs> What is your typical, what is your typical dinner like? I like to have a big fish, you know, with a sweet potato. I keep it real simple because I know that in the morning I've had my veggies in my shake. So I don't worry about my veggies anymore. I just want to have oh. a, 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 a nice piece of fish, you know, I mm -hmm. put it on the grill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always outside grilling. <laughs> okay, Sorry. well, Naples, Florida. I guess you could do that. <laughs> so you know, that's what I do, and uh, I normally try to eat before six o'clock. Yes, sir. So my food get digested. Yes, sir. So at least around nine thirty. So I get some rest, and my body can repair itself. So important. And I really want us to be able to talk about that too one day and talk about what you know will um, help people to get good rest. Um, because of course, that's essential for the body to repair itself. It's essential for the digestive system. 
And if you're not getting the rest, then your body's having a problem. So you, I can't wait for you to share with us the, the, the natural remedies, the herbs and the things to do in order to make that a reality for a lot of us. Well, we have, um, we have, we are actually approaching our time limit for this podcast. And I feel so great because um, I'm finally sticking to within um, the time <laughs> that they gave me. <laughs> but I get very, very excited about these subjects. So I could go, you know, I could go past. But I want to thank you again, Master Reed, for your time and all the uh, um, wisdom, the knowledge, and the information that you have to share with us. And listen, everyone, we're going to, you know, I know that everyone doesn't prescribe to everything, but we're going to give you what the information that we can give you that we know is out there. And you take what you need for you and you make it work for you. Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Grandmaster Abdul Aziz Muhammad. And listen, don't forget, you got to click on this. Give us your likes, give us your comments, and subscribe to this channel. And you can give us one last word. I know you got something, because I love what you said. Conquers all. Say it again. Love conquers everything. Oh, I love it. I love it. Praise be to Allah. Thank you so much. You have a blessed day, and I'm sending that love back to you, Master Andrew. Peace and blessings. Every student of a master here today, you reflect your master teacher. You want to walk like him. You want to talk like her. But you start by having an object in front of you that you admire, admire, admire.